Europe's greatest players gathered at the Stoke City football ground in England to play in a farewell game for the greatest player of them all, Sir Stanley Matthews. Well, he was like what he's, we know he's our most famous football son and uh, there's always been great interest in him and uh, because uh, uh, there are very, there have been very few names, if any, more iconic than Stanley Matthews in terms of English football. He's up there with uh, just a few. Hmm. People say, what's it like having a famous father? And I said, I don't know, it was just normal to me. He was a, a fantastic family man uh, and his children came first and he kept us out of the limelight. But I used to be taken occasionally to Stoke City with my brothers, I, I'm from a large family and I'd, I was a gap between uh, the, my, the next brother because we had we were quite, I had quite a lot of sisters and they, they, my elder brothers used to take me to Stoke. I always remember it was town in, which was a bank, a tip, and they'd find, uh, they, they'd find a good place so that I could see the game. And that, that, that would be my that, that very early memories of uh, that Stoke City team after the war when the great man played. Well, I know he came over to Dublin in 1957, I think, to play for uh, the Football League against the uh, League of Ireland. And I was, obviously, I was a 10-year-old, 11-year-old lad growing up in Dublin and uh, being fanatical about football. Everybody wanted to see Stanley Matthews play, and I was no exception. So that was my first actual vision of him in the flesh. And, uh, of course, I remember the 1953 Cup final at Wembley when he played for Blackpool. I listened to that on the radio. So um. I actually saw it on television. We hadn't got a television, but we went to a relative's uh, named Doyle's in Golden Hill, and it was a pretty crowded uh, living room uh, when uh, we all saw what a dramatic final it was. It's gone down in as one of the uh, uh, the great uh, post-war finals. Mm. You know how he never got booked on the pitch and was always. Um very gentlemanly and, and he'd get his own back by gritting his teeth and making sure he beat the back or whoever it was next time. But at home, he had to win at everything. Tiddlywinks, whatever it was. His record for the 100 yards was very impressive. He was a, so he was a fine athlete and a fine sprinter and so he got pace. But he got this uh, surge of pace, you know, this quick, uh, this quick 10 yards when he could just go, he just left you. Well, his skills, his dribbling skills, I mean, he was fantastic. He was a defender's nightmare because I know that uh, every fullback he played against, they always felt that they could uh, match him for ability. But Stan had this special ability that enabled him to go past players. And he was a creative player rather than a goal scorer. And I mean, for a centre forward playing or an inside forward playing in those days, I mean, Stan was a dream. You just give him the ball, as long as you gave him the ball to his feet. And sometimes there were they were on the back because he, he dazzled them with his bit of skill, but he, he got wonderful balance, wonderful dribbling skills. Dribbling was much more common then and uh, nobody, he wasn't called the wizard of the dribble for nothing. Of course, the legacy now is through the Sir Stanley Matthews Foundation is doing, is coaching young people and we're helping thousands of young people in sport. He was the first footballer to be recognised all over the world, I think. The attendance would go up simply because Stanley Matthews would play. No telly, remember? You didn't see him on the television, so they got to go and see him, uh, uh, see him in the flesh. And in London, crowds would go up. Europe, South America, got to go and see this special player. So it gives you some idea of just how significant he was in the, in, in the game. He was an amazing player and he would have been an amazing player today. I, th I take the view that you can only be the best in your own time. Well, he, he, you were, I mean, Jimmy Greaves, I think, said a few weeks ago, where do you start? You would start as far as a £50 million pound figure and then you'd walk upwards because he had this unique ability, as I said. And I mean, you've mentioned the conditions today. The pitches are, are like billiard tables. The balls are much lighter. There's no tackling. I mean, Stan would actually be assaulted by defenders years ago and he never retaliated. I mean, nowadays you, you can't actually whistle at a player unless, uh, you know, you get a yellow card. Remember, he was a very fine athlete. He was a man before his time. He was into diet and uh, he never, he didn't drink. He was accessible because everybody in the potteries knew him. They'd meet him in the street, he'd stop and talk to them. And uh, I'm afraid that's something that's lacking in the game today. This is, uh, 
you know, ability to be able to communicate with the public and, and Stan had that in spades. And to think that he's remembered for the last 15 years is amazing. But I know that he will, as age comes and all from that era will not be here anymore, I know now that the Sir Stanley Matthews Foundation is actually bigger than Sir Stanley and is, you know, and is there for all time. Sir Stanley Matthews was carried shoulder high off the field.